Hey guys, check out this blue star fern. I can't even believe my luck. It's massive. Um, I got it kind of on a clearance deal at a nursery. It was kind of in the back back and had a lot of brown fronds, which I've mostly removed. And it's also terribly root bound. I got kind of a good deal on it and I'm very excited about it. I am gonna get it out of its pot today and repot it and then I'll give you some hair tips as we go. But let me say two things before we get going. <laughs> ah, it's so loud, I'm sorry, I'm outside again. COVID problems, you know, it's loud and I have neighbors, I have lots of traffic. I don't know, maybe we'll have helicopters again. Who knows, it's loud, I'm sorry, I will try to speak up and I hope that the extra noise isn't terribly irritating, please forgive me. Second, I would like to take care of that subscribe situation right now. Please go over there and hit subscribe. It really helps me out, but it's going to be awesome for you because Fridays I have videos and you'll be the first to know. You'll get a notification if you ring that bell and free tips on Fridays. I mean, isn't that all what we need? Some happy free plant advice on Fridays? Go ahead and hit subscribe. Blue star ferns are actually very popular house plants because, drum roll, they're actually very easy care plants. And for a fern, that's kind of a big deal. This one actually has been growing outside. I found it in kind of the outside lot of this place, which is perfect because I'm actually going to put it in this empty spot behind my sofa here outside. So it's already acclimated and it's good to go. As you can see here, the rhizomes, which I often incorrectly call roots, they're not roots. They're trying to escape the pot. This thing is seriously root bound. While it doesn't mind sometimes to be a little root bound, this is like all roots and all rhizomes. Let's try to get it out of here. <laughs> so I think I'm going to make a little slice with my utility knife and just give it a little bit of space. Okay, I cut it open. <laughs> And you can see it desperately wants out of here. Okay. Oh yeah. Ah! Just broke one. So you can see this thing is like all roots, all rhizomes. it definitely is ready to be repotted. So in order to repot, <laughs> so in order to repot, I am just going to move him into the next size up pot. Now I did actually, when I was um, wrestling this plant, I did accidentally break off a few rhizomes. And so I am going to propagate those separately into another pot. I could cut the plant in half and make two plants of it, but I really want to see how big this plant gets and I do have a bigger space for it. So I don't necessarily want two pots in there, I just want one pot in the full plants. So I'm just gonna put it in the next size up so that it can continue to grow big and fill in that space. Now soil does matter for blue star ferns. Most of the blue star ferns that you are gonna find at the store are going to be grown in just your regular potting mix. If that's what you have on hand, that's totally fine. But these plants are actually epiphytes, which means that they grow on trees. So they're growing on a tree. They're not really used to sitting in a lot of soil. They do like to be wet. They like to be um, humid because that's their environment that they're normally growing in, jungles, etc. So humid conditions, but not necessarily super wet soil. So we want to have some really well draining soil to put in there. I would have potted it maybe like in straight orchid mix. Um, but I didn't have a lot of that on hand. So what I ended up doing is I used some basic potting mix, like a miracle Grow potting mix, and then I amended it with orchid bark and orchid mix, which is a mixture of sand and, and bark, and um, it also had some worm castings in it, which is why I'm not going to add any extra worm castings now. Now as I repot, I'm gonna be aware that I don't want to cover up those rhizomes. Normally I would be tempted to because A, they're totally disgusting and I don't want to look at them, and B, they look like roots, so generally you would put those underneath the soil. But again, they're not roots. 
they're actually modified stem tissue and from the rhizome stems can form and also roots as well as the rhizomes have hairs on them which is also nasty but they have a job to do and they're collecting moisture from the air and from watering so they have an important job to do and they shouldn't be buried. So despite the eyesore, I am going to be careful as I pot up that they stay on top of the soil line. And as I said, I, took, I broke some off. So the ones that were kind of hanging over the side of the pot, they ended up here. So these creepy little furry fingers are going to be potted up separately. Blue star ferns, like most plants, um, can get a little funky when you repot them. So what you want to do is just really be watching it. If it's showing signs of distress and maybe drooping or yellowing leaves, this is not the time to overwater. I mean, there's never a time to overwater. But what's happening is the plant might be in shock. And if the plant is in shock, you don't want to add extra water because the plant won't be photosynthesizing. They won't use that water up and that water will just continue to sit in the soil and rot their roots. Sorry, <laughs> Sorry you can't see me. This is seriously a two-person job, so if any of you are volunteering to be my assistant, please let me know in the comments below. I could use an assistant. I can't pay you, <laughs> but I could use one. As you're considering water, many people say that you don't want to top water the ferns because the water can sit up here and potentially rot or cause baldness. And I would normally heed that, but let's be honest, <laughs> this is going outside and all of my outside plants are actually grown in containers. They're in pots. So I, I water from the top. I end up hose watering everything. So, you know, I could be concerned about that, but since it's outside, things dry off really, really quickly out here. So I'm just not as worried about that. If I was growing this for indoors, I would consider bottom watering just because things don't dry out as easily. <laughs> <laughs> things don't dry out as easily indoors as they do outside okay I think that's pretty good now as far as light goes for the blue star ferns they love bright indirect light mine is gonna sit out here in the shade it's gonna get dappled tree light like you see here all day long it's gonna be so happy that being said you can definitely grow blue star ferns indoors and they do fine as long as they get plenty of light I know a lot of people think ferns are kind of low light plants and some can tolerate it but this blue star is going to do absolutely its best with a lot of bright light now as far as watering goes they do want to be slightly damp but not as wet as other ferns which is why I gave them the potting soil with lots of drainage I'm probably gonna end up watering this about once a week in the hot, hot months, maybe twice a week, and that's for outdoor. So you wanna make sure if it's wet for indoors, if it's really wet, if you can feel the wet, damp soil, don't water it. Again, it's an epiphyte, so don't overwater. I touched on it before, but ferns can be oversensitive to fertilizing. I do fertilize my outdoor ferns maybe once a month to every five or six weeks in the growing season. That should be it. I am going to propagate these little ones. I'm gonna put them in soil and then I will do a follow-up video later to show you how well they're doing. But what I've heard, and I haven't propagated these before, so it'll be a little bit of an experiment, is you just place the rhizomes on top of the soil. The soil needs to stay damp and then theoretically, roots should develop. I wasn't planning on doing that today, so I need stakes and et cetera to kind of keep these upright. So we'll see how that goes and I will keep you posted. If you want more plant tips, head over to Rosetta Grows on Instagram. My feed, my stories, um, my IGTV, it's just chock full of free plant tips for you. So go ahead and follow me over there. And of course, if you haven't subscribed, do so now. Go ahead and click here and check out these other videos as well. You guys, I'm so grateful that you're here. Thank you so much. I'll see you next week.